Okay, students, welcome to our second lecture. We're very excited to have uh, Jeremy and Caitlin with us tonight. We're going to introduce them more formally in just a minute. But uh, welcome. We're glad you're in the class. We're glad you're here tonight. And welcome to any guests that are visiting. Uh, how did you like Dave and Liz Finley last week? They were awesome, weren't they? What a great, great story. They were, they were so excited to come and meet with you. And they were so disappointed that the weather was so bad. It was terrible all morning. And the prediction was that we wouldn't be able to get through the canyon. It actually cleared up a little bit, but the decision had been made. So they've agreed to come back next year, and they want to be here in person. And we're going to schedule in April so they can for sure get here, OK? So what we're going to do now, we're going to hear from uh, our TA Logan just has an announcement. And he'll answer any questions you have about the assignments for the class. Then we have two of our SEED uh, ambassadors that are going to make uh, a quick pitch about the SEED program. And then uh, KG is going to introduce our speakers. So let's just go ahead and get started. All right, guys, so there's been a little bit of confusion about the papers, so I just want to clear everything up. I also sent out a Canvas announcement. But for your attendance and grade, all you need to do is get one of those physical papers from us that they hand out at the entrance. Um, just write down some things you learned, right? And then turn it into me or one of the other helpers at the end of the class. You do not need to submit anything on Canvas for the papers. So all you need to do is hand them to us, but we do need the physical copy. Right, because that's how we're going to know that you're here and that you actually attended. And take a picture at the end, because we want you to keep these for your notes. There's a lot of good things to learn here. And if you're like me, if you don't write it down, you're going to forget it. So um, that's how it works, though. We need you to hand us the physical copy, and then we just mark it complete or not complete. Does anyone have any questions about how that works? Clears mud? Sweet. OK. Uh, then I'm going to give it to the seat ambassadors quick. Okay, hello everyone. I'm McCall and this is Mikel. We just all got back from Churia, Peru doing SEED. And for those who don't know what SEED is, um, it's basically a three month internship where you go and help small businesses all around the country and you get to put in practice your business um, principles that you're learning. Yes, and SEED is for all majors. So me and Mikel were both actually not business majors, but anybody can do it and you will learn skills for any career that you're gonna go into. Um, the business um, school also provides stipends, so it's super awesome and a lot cheaper than any other study abroad experience that you're gonna get. So after this class, we're gonna be at a table just outside. So if you're interested, please come and find us. We have some openings for summer and fall, and so you can come and do it and we can just tell you any other questions about it. How's it going, everybody? My name is KG. I'm here to introduce our speakers tonight, Jeremy and Caitlin Carlson. They are the owners of the revolutionary ice cream shop, Crispy Cones. Jeremy grew up uh, as an army brat, military brat, and he's lived in over eight different states and countries. He served his mission in the Czech Republic, where he found his love of European pastries, which is where he sort of got the idea for Crispy Cones. And when he came home, he started Crispy Cones in May of 2018 in a tent, which just proves that you can start a business from nothing and turn it into something amazing. Jeremy and Caitlin met at the beginning of Crispy Cones after Jeremy hired Caitlin as his social media manager. Um, Caitlin grew up, for, uh, is from Star Valley, Wyoming, and graduated from BYU-Idaho in PR. Um, and in college, Caitlin ran a very successful wedding photography business for six years. As they worked together, they became best friends, which led to a marriage in, at the end of 2020. And since then, they've grown Crispy Cones to several locations across the Western United States and have appeared on the hit show Shark Tank, and, which is where they landed their deal with Barbara Cor Cochran. Corcoran? How do you? Corcoran. Um, and they currently reside in St. Anthony, Idaho with their daughter, Macy, and their dog, Penny. Please give it up for Jeremy and Caitlin Carlson. Okay, thank you guys. We are so excited to be here. This is so fun. This is actually kind of surreal. This is like a full circle moment right now because four or five years ago, 
I was sitting in your seat right there, listening to Amy Reese Anderson, Peter Huntsman, um, these multimillionaires, billionaires, and I was like so in awe of who they were, and never once in my mind did I think that the school would contact us to be here, but uh, here we are. So we got it up. Is it working? Okay. <laughs> You're good. All right. I guess <laughs> do we do it without the PowerPoint, or you want us to wait for you? Okay. So what we wanted to kind of talk about today now, I'm really hoping they can get it going today because we have some sick videos of us in the tank with Barbara Corcoran running the company um, and then where we're at now, how far we've come. But the whole point is if we, want, if, if we left today, the whole goal was to make sure you understand that manifesting your dreams into a reality is possible. And we kind of want to be that example for you because we truly believe that we manifested our, our dreams into a reality more ways than not. Yeah, I think just as we reflected on, on our journey and everything that's led us to where we are right now, um, we truly have manifested so much um, from the very beginning, and we are really excited to share that with you. Um, Jeremy has a lot of more background in the beginnings of the company, like our intro mentioned, I joined um, when he hired me as a social media manager a couple years in, um, but the background is, is really interesting, and I'm going to let Jeremy tell that part for us. Yeah, so we got to get these pictures up, because that's the best part. So <laughs> I, I uh, no stress, though. He's starting to sweat. I think I can see it on his forehead. Yes. <laughs> um, so I actually, I'll get, I'll get into it, and then I can show you the pictures when they get it up. But I was serving uh, a mission for my church in the Czech Republic, in Europe. And I uh, saw that they, they would make these pastry cones on, like, the side of the street. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is, like, the coolest idea. And it's so awesome. And digging into the history of it, um, we found out that uh, this, is, this treat comes back all the way to the 17th century. Oh, awesome. They did it. Okay, so Okay, so I just like tap it. Or is this the clicker I use? Okay, so I'll just tell you to go to the next slide and then you do it for me. Okay, awesome. There she is. Um quick, I'll I'll explain. You okay. can introduce <laughs> us though more. Okay, little intro. This is our family. Our 9-month-old daughter Macy right there. She was about 3 months old in this picture. But she is the light of our lives. and She's, she's actually here today, somewhere in the, in the back. back. She is so, so fun. <laughs> She'll come say hi to you guys at the ice cream social afterwards. But um, she is the greatest thing ever. But we also have a golden doodle, Penny. She is about two years old, and she was technically our firstborn. And we love golden doodles and our happy dog parents as well. Yes, we, we do. All right, let's hit it to the next page. Okay, so like I was talking about, this is what it would look like. They would make these, what, what they call them, tradelniki, or brioches, um, on the street. And this dates all the way back into Hungary, Transylvania, Slovakia, Czechoslovakia, um, all the way back to the 17th century. So what's really cool about it is it's this dough cone, um, this like sweet dough cone. They wrap around a wooden dowel, they put sugar on it, and then they put it over heat. Um, and then it would caramelize on top of the, the cone, making this like donut type cone, except it's not fried, so it's healthy, right? Anyway, so I would see these, and this is where I was in the Czech Republic. And the last week that I was, the last week or so that I was in the Czech Republic, I actually had a dream. And I'm not kidding you because I, 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 I explained this on Shark Tank as well. Um, but I had a dream of me making this product but in the United States, I thought it was the wildest dream. I was like, I don't know, I'm not even a chef, I'm not a baker, I don't even know how to do that. But maybe that means something fun, like maybe I can start a company from this. So let's go to the next uh, page here. Okay, um, so I came back and I said, all right, I love entrepreneurship, I love business, I want to create something from nothing. And so I hit the ground running as soon as I got home from my mission. 
And this picture is actually hanging up in our headquarter building. And it is my great aunt's kitchen in St. Anthony, Idaho. And so I would go to school in the days at BYUI before I transferred to Utah State. And, uh, and I would make the product in this kitchen and learn it and teach myself it at night. So I'd go to school in the day and then go to this kitchen at night. Let's go to the next one. Okay, so then I said, all right, I want to start a business, and starting a business costs money, but it doesn't need to cost a lot of money. Sometimes all it takes is just you and what you have in your, your wallet. So I started it out of this canopy tent I bought off Amazon for 200 bucks, and I had a specialized grill made for me in Europe, and then I bought these broken tables off Amazon and built this dinky stage and called it a business and said I'm open for business. And uh, I wish I had videos, I wish I had pictures of our grand opening out of this tiny tent. But people took it seriously, we had a line to the road. It was an insane day and that's where I made my very first dollar. And that is where my entrepreneurship fire just freaking blew up. And I was like, this is addicting, this is fun, I like entrepreneurship, this is who I wanna be, I wanna build a big business out of this. Let's go to the next one. So this is a couple of my first employees. Backstory of, of this, I told my first two employees, I said, you'll probably be out of a job in two weeks uh, because I don't know how far this is going to go. They're like, that's all right. Like, we don't got anything else. And so this is how we opened it. Um, and uh, talk about next level ghetto because this, this tent blew away about five times um, in the wind in East Idaho. Let's go to the next picture. So then I, I turned these profits from this location into, well, this is how I did my social media marketing, um, if, as you can tell. So this is also in my aunt's house. I needed a backdrop, so pillows is my backdrop. And I thought this was the shiz, and I didn't think anyone would notice those were pillows, but you can definitely tell those are pillows. Um, but this was our very first post on Instagram, okay? Like, this is what my company's brand started like. I was like, this is bad A, this is amazing. Um, and I thought the pillows were the greatest ideas. Okay, let's go to the next one. So we went into a, um, well, I think you should definitely get into this part. So at this time of the tent, I, this was May 20, 2018. So I was a sophomore at BYU-Idaho. I, um, I was off track at the time. So I was living at home in Star Valley, Wyoming. And I was sitting on my couch, and I get this DM from Crispy Cone's Instagram account. I had never heard of them before. I get this DM. It says, hey, if you come out um, to our business, we'll give you a free dessert if you post about it on Instagram. Just tag us, and we'll give you a free one. And I was all about that. I thought that was the greatest thing ever, to get free product and to post about it. I was like, absolutely. So I hopped in the car with my mom, and we drove two hours to Rexburg, Idaho, pulled up to this little tent on the side of the road, and I honestly thought it was the coolest thing ever. I was like, look at this. They just started this little thing. It is so fun, it's so cute. And I took some pictures, posted it on my Instagram, and tried to tell everyone that I knew in Rexburg about Crispy Cones and how freaking cool it was. And not only that, but it was so good. It was, they didn't have ice cream this first year. It was just the dough cone with Nutella on the inside and strawberries and bananas and whipped cream and Nutella. It was so good. So I immediately fell in love with Crispy Cones and the product to where, go to the next one. Wait, wait, little did she know that her baby daddy, soon to be baby daddy in the future, was just right up there. <laughs> He's literally right in the back. That's our invisible string is that I showed up there and Jeremy was behind, but we like didn't even know anything. Yep. Macy, that's where your parents met. Yes. So go to the next one. Um, fast forward a year later. So our interaction, well, let's go back one slide. But we, um, that interaction, we were just friends. We didn't, it wasn't anything like love at first sight, nothing. But I came back to the business when they were in a trailer now. And in this trailer, Jeremy designed, he'll kind of explain this part a little bit. Um, but they finally introduced gourmet soft serve ice cream, which was really cool. So once again, me and my friend came out, and we just took some pictures of the cone, thought it was so cute, posted it on Instagram, and I get this DM again from Crispy Cones. It says, hey, saw that you love our brand, you love the product, I was curious, would you be willing to just run our full social media account? And I had a background in photography, I was doing weddings, 
and I just love social media. I wanted to get more experience, and so I said, well, yeah, I'll do it, but can I get free ice cream? And he said, yeah, of course. So he didn't pay me at all that entire year. I got paid an ice cream, which I was okay with. I thought it was super fun. But tell him a little about, about this trailer. Um, I didn't have money to pay. You guys all laugh like I had money to pay. <laughs> <clears throat> I, uh, I was actually at Utah State at this point. So I transferred away from the BYUIs. And I uh, came to Utah State. And uh, I was in the library. And in the little uh, cubicle places where you can like uh, schedule a private room or whatever and be in there for a couple hours. I would be in there every single night speaking with the Chinese and designing and building a trailer in China. And so I would go to school again in the days and then at nights I was working on my business building this trailer because we didn't have money again but we had just enough for a Chinese manufactured trailer. So I designed this trailer online with these two Chinese girls and I didn't know if it was gonna be a scam or not but it showed up to LA so that's good and um, we put all our profits into this and then Kate was part of the group she's part of the company but for free of course and um, and then we quadrupled in sales and that's where I saw as an entrepreneur this could really turn into something even bigger like the company was just growing at this point and I talk about the company this is the company like a trailer on the side of the road so let's go to the next uh, slide. Go back one. So if you remember, I went from pillow couches to Kate to now this. So when he hired me, I took this so seriously and knew that there was power in having high quality imagery, high quality videos, and just everything to put on social media it needed to be professional and high quality. And we had this mindset that we were just going to kind of fake it till we made it. And we imagined ourselves bigger than what we were. In the grand scheme of things, this business was this tiny little trailer in Rexburg, Idaho, one single location. It really was not that big. But in our minds, we thought that this was big. And we compared ourselves with McDonald's and Cold Stone and we created images and stuff to try to be at that level. Because if we didn't take ourselves seriously, how is the public gonna take us seriously and how are people gonna come and try our product if we didn't take ourselves seriously and put ourselves on a professional pedestal like we wanted to be? So that's what we, we did. We would spend hours doing videos and taking pictures in the late nights of the evening because I was also a student and so after the business would close for the day, it'd be 10, 11 p.m., I would come out and we would film and then I would edit them that very same night, stay up till three, four in the morning. We'd have a video out the next morning and we took it so seriously and really put our all into it and, and tried to really emphasize that high quality content on social media. Yeah. And we still didn't have a lot of money and you don't need a lot of money for a million dollar picture. So this is, what I would say is a million dollar picture. It came out of a $25 Amazon like design box. You can get off Amazon. Um, but this is actually one of the pictures we uh, submitted, I think, to Shark Tank because it was like one of the uh, originals. Um, there are a couple of videos coming up. So if you're up there, just make sure that the sound works. Let's go to the next uh, slide really quick. Kind of along those same lines of faking it till we made it kind of things. We um, another thing as we as he hired me on, we sat down together and we started going over marketing plans and what we really wanted to do. And it was fun for me to pull this back up from June 2019 and looking at what goals and um, objectives and stuff we had. And on our goals and every single platform that we were focusing on at the time, I listed confidence. I wanted to be confident in everything that we were putting out onto social media and into the public eye. Because like I said, again, if we didn't believe in ourselves, how was this gonna happen? But we were manifesting that if we had confidence that this was gonna blow up and this was gonna be something huge. And we, we imagined ourselves as this multi-million dollar company and we had confidence that it really could be that if we gave it our all and we faked it till we made it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's run to the next slide. I think everyone knows where this is going. So we, uh, I basically married my employee at the time. Um, <clears throat> and uh, good thing we didn't have an HR department because I probably broke some laws and something with employment. But 
nonetheless, <clears throat> we got married. We fell in love. We were dating. This was during COVID. So actually, Utah State, they sent out a massive text to everyone and said, school's basically out for summer when it was March because of COVID. But everyone went home. And so I went back to Idaho. The business was running during COVID. She was there. The trailer was running. And uh, we just fell in love. And it was like the perfect little puzzle and got married at the end of the year. Um, go to the next slide. So we basically are married at this point, and then we talk about it, and we say, okay, so what do we want to actually do with this business? We could just sell it off, do something different. I was going to school here. Um, I came back. School was in session. Um, but we said to each other, the business has gotten this far. How much further can it go? And so we both agreed that we would grow the company until it couldn't grow anymore um, and stay with it until it couldn't grow anymore. And we had an opportunity um, in South Logan. There was a storefront there. The leases were cheap. COVID was still high. And so we got into a storefront and we said, all right, if we wanted to scale this, we needed to get into smaller size storefronts. Trailers, um, we could not get the product out fast enough. Inventory was always low. Um, it was super hot, be 114 degrees in the trailer, which is a safety concern. And so we got into this uh, storefront, we signed the lease on it, we convinced the landlord that we were very, very professional business people and knew what we were doing, they had no idea. Um, and uh, the, the owners of this building is Wasatch, actually. And so we went into Wasatch's office to sign it, and I think Anita Lockhart, the COO of Wasatch, was like, oh my gosh, they're gonna be like in and out in two days. And, uh, but we signed the lease. We've, we were, it's under remodel right now, actually. Um, so it's not open, uh, but we built it out. Young college students had no money, didn't know what we were doing, but we did it. Go ahead and go to the next slide. So we open up, and this is what showed up for us in Logan, Utah. It broke record sales. So at the time we had our Rexburg location still going, the, tr the trailer, and then we had this storefront here in Logan, Utah going, um, and it blew us away, and that's where the fire lit again, and I was like, this can get even bigger. Like, if we can keep growing this, that's where the entrepreneurial fire just hit right into my chest again. So we'll go to the next slide. So then we said, all right, if we wanted to scale this, we can't be in a trailer anymore. Um, it was kind of getting run down, so I actually sold it for more than what I paid for it, thanks to COVID and steel. Steel prices went insane. and. Um, <laughs> Uh, I kind of feel bad about that now that I look back because it was a piece of crap, but the guy who paid for it. So then we uh, sold that trailer and uh, then we got into a brand new storefront um, in Rexburg, Idaho. Again, we convinced them. We're right in between like Pizza Hut and Cup Bop, two major national franchises and uh, convinced to be there. And so we built out the storefront there. It's obviously much nicer than the Logan store was. And, uh, and then we opened up in Rexburg, Idaho, and uh, we were like, well, how much bigger can we make this? It just keeps getting bigger. We're making a lot of money from it. Let's get it bigger. So let's go to the next slide. So then we applied for Shark Tank. Who heard of Shark Tank? Okay, literally everyone. That was the stupidest question. Um, we applied for Shark Tank in January of what? 2022. Yeah. So we were just sitting on our couch one night watching Shark Tank, and we thought to ourselves, what is the difference between us sitting on our couch right now and those people who are in the tank and pitching to the sharks? Like, they are just average Joes like us, and we could totally do that. So right there in that moment, we hopped on the website. It was a simple little application of probably like three questions asking what our lifetime sales were, the name of the business, your website, just little things like that. And we clicked submit. This was said, thank you. Your application was submitted. And we just kind of waited. We did I was like, I'm going to take a picture of this just in case I get famous one day. No, I'm not <laughs> famous. But I was like, you think we're actually going to go on the show? Thousands and thousands of 60, people apply for Shark Tank. So the odds of us going on were very, very slim. And our hopes were... Not high, but we did honestly manifest to ourselves like, okay, we're going to apply. And the worst that could happen is we never hear back or they tell us no. But best case scenario, we go on Shark Tank. So let's yeah. just manifest this and say that, yeah, we applied for Shark Tank. 
because we're going on Shark Tank. Yeah, we would tell all of our close friends, we applied for Shark Tank, we're going on Shark Tank, we're going to pitch in front of Mark Cuban, like, be jealous, and, like, we hadn't heard a thing from Shark Tank, <laughs> and so we were literally manifesting it, and when we'd lay in bed, we'd be like, oh, we can't wait to be, like, talking with Mark Cuban and pitching our idea in front of, in front of Barbara Corcoran and um, getting yelled at by Kevin O'Leary, like, we can't wait for that moment. Um, and we hadn't heard anything. But then February rolls around, a month, we get a call from California. I'm lying in bed. It's early in the morning. And uh, usually I uh, red button California numbers because I'm like, that's a spam. But Kate was like, you have to answer that. And I was like, oh, my gosh, all right, fine, I'll answer it. And so I answered it, and she's like, hi, this is, what was her name? I feel bad. I don't remember. <laughs> she was like, this is the casting crew of Shark Tank. Uh, we would uh, love to get to know you a little bit more. Did you take your COVID-19 shot? I was like, that's the first question you asked me. But um, uh, we, uh, and then she was like, what's your lifetime sales? Have you ever gone bankrupt? Um, are you a fraud? All these different things. And we're like, no, no, we've never gone bankrupt. Um, but we're so interested. Are you guys interested in us? And she's like, well, no, uh, no promises, but thanks. Goodbye. Hung up the phone. I was like, Kate, the casting crew just called us. I have no idea what that was about. And then they call us again, like two weeks later, and they're like, hey, uh, can we set up a Zoom call? And then we're like, all right, this is actually getting serious. And so we... It actually happen. <laughs> yeah, so it went from casting crew, it was all virtual, so we never went to a Shark Tank casting call where you show up in L.A. or something. Like, thank goodness I didn't have to do that, because um, we probably wouldn't have gotten on the show otherwise. But um, they started working with producers, and then they assigned us specific producers that were working for us. Um, and then we're like, holy crap. And then we're signing like waivers, secret waivers. And they're like, you better not say anything to your friends and family. And so I think Martha, my mother-in-law back there is like the only person that knew. And our friends, our close friends had no idea as well. Um, is the next slide the video? Uh, I think so. Okay, so we'll watch a quick little uh, video. If you can go to the next slide, it should automatically play. Oh, the music or the sound is not on. Um, but I'll give a little background. We made this fun little video. This was actually in my aunt's kitchen, you can tell. This is my cousin. She uh, would just hang out with me um, at the time. And uh, we've got to get the sound because I'm playing a thing of Shark Tank on here, which is really fun. But um, that's my, oh, she would die if she saw that right now on the big screen. But my, uh, my great aunt, that was her. She was my test, my first public test. When I made the product, I said, this is, uh, this is what we want to, sell and she was like this is people are going to crave this like everywhere this is going to be really awesome and so uh that's where we tested it okay you able to get the what's up okay no worries um kind of some background yeah. is like through our process of um before we actually got to shark tank it was a big long process so like you said we met with different producers and they would get us through and then they would say okay we need you guys to produce um, a video of you talking about your business kind of as if you're actually pitching to the sharks so we made this video of us talking to the sharks saying this is why you should pick us and um, we really tried to sell ourselves and sell our story and the brand and everything and it worked it got us to the next round and so they kept moving us forward and we just kept manifesting, honestly, that it was going to continue. We're going to continue through the process, and that we were going to make it into the tank, into the shark tank, and that we were going to partner with the shark that we wanted, which was Barbara Corcoran. We <laughs> Oh, there's a sound. Awesome. We love Barbara Corcoran and everything that she stand, stands for, and so that's who we were kind of wanting to go into the tank with. But let's watch this video, get a little... Background okay, here we are with our very first crispy cones. This might be our first failure, but we're learning a lot. Multi-million dollar company. You have done it. People are going to be craving these. Video. Ashley, how busy was it today? Hey guys, this is Jeremy Carlson. Stressed out, long day. Ice cream machine is breaking. Business is going to work. Love everybody! We hope you're doing awesome. Dad's first crispy cone. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
It's 12.30 at night! I just add, that was insane. It includes long nights, cheeseburgers, and makeout sessions. Gotten out of hand. There's not even a path. Oh, we can say is this. Shutting the window. So freaking tired. <laughs> oh no, he's dead. Record day for Rexburg! Woo! Today is April 7th and we are filming for Shark Tank Executive Producers. Hi Sharks, I'm Kate and this is Jeremy and together we are revolutionizing the soft serve calm. Getting ready for making a video. Hi Sharks, my name is Jeremy Carlson. And I'm Caitlin Carlson. Crispy Cove! Oh yeah! yeah. T-minus we can have Okay, going on, Shark Tank, flying out today. This is like a dream since I was like a 10 year old boy. And they're literally flying us out to go in front of the sharks. I am freaking out. Getting ready. Okay, so this was last year. March 17th <coughs> is when we aired uh, on the national stage. Uh, about five million people watched our episode. You can hit the next slide. Um, so this was our official portrait from Shark Tank. Um, and the coolest thing about this process, every time I watch that video, I get a little emotional because the coolest thing that's come out of this business is her and our relationship. And nothing is cooler than building a business with your spouse and your wife and your partner. It is the coolest thing. Um, I would dread every single day if I built a massive business by myself and if I was standing up here by myself talking about me and my business because at that point it would be like you just married your business. But the best thing is going on the national stage in front of the Sharks, Mark Cuban, Barbara Corcoran, Robert, Kevin, um, Lori Grenier. I'm like, who else was there? Um, but nothing was cooler than doing that with my spouse. And this is where I, I get a little bit religious because right before we walked down here, we were behind the doors. They had mic'd us up. They put makeup all over my face. It was like the first time I've ever like, I was like, Kate was loving it because Olivia Rodrigo's stylist was doing her hair or something. And, and so <laughs> she was like, <laughs> she's like, oh, you uh, work for Olivia Rodrigo? <laughs> anyway. Um, but we were standing behind the doors, we were mic'd up, and we had practiced, like in that video, our pitch so many times. It's 30 seconds, you better not freaking forget it, like that would be the most embarrassing thing ever. And we're standing behind the doors, and I'm like, Kate, I forgot my pitch. I couldn't even remember the first line of my pitch. And I look at her, and I'm like, I forgot my pitch. And I just know the producers probably all looked at each other, because they're like hearing us on the mics, like, oh crap. And, uh, but Kate, she immediately starts to pray. And she's like, Heavenly Father, just please help us that we'll be able to get through this, that Jeremy will not embarrass us. And, <laughs> and, uh, and as soon as she said amen, they opened up the doors. It was showtime. So we walked down the hall, and uh, we uh, illegally stole this video from Disney. So don't tell Disney because Disney owns ABC. But uh, we cut it, and we're going to show you the first part of our pitch. So go ahead and click the next. First in the tank is a decadent twist to a favorite sweet treat. Hi Sharks, my name is Jeremy Carlson. And I'm Caitlin Carlson. We are here seeking $200,000 for 10% equity of our company, Crispy Cones. Sharks, for years we've been eating ice cream out of this. Boring! Ice cream is royalty in the dessert kingdom. It deserves to be treated as such. <laughs> and you shouldn't eat a frozen majesty, the queen of sweets. 
out of this crumbly cardboard coffin. Barf. That's why I revolutionized the soft serve cone with crispy cones. Freshly made dough cones grilled rotisserie style, covered in cinnamon sugar and cookie powder. Mm. Finally, a cone fit for a queen. At all of our crispy cones locations, we cook our doughy crispy cones on our specialty grill, fresh to order. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> wow. And then wow. we powder them to your liking. You then choose a spread like hazelnut chocolate, cookie butter, gourmet soft serve ice cream, a topping of choice, and what sauce to drizzle on top. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Barbara, are you drooling yet? I'm drooling. So Sharks, <laughs> who's ready to give ice cream the proper throne it deserves with Crispy, Crispy cones. cones. <laughs> when can we start? Right Dig now. In. Take it. Sharks, so you have a full crispy cone with a spread on the inside and then ice cream. And then the cone next to it should be a warm cone oh with a spread gosh, on the inside. Oh my gosh, this is incredible. Wow. So it's almost a donut. We don't mark it as a donut and it's not fried. It's not fried? It's not fried. Not fried. It's not fried. We put it on those dowels right there on the grill, and then they grill with heat, rotisserie style, caramelizing the sugar. Look at this delicious. I know, we made that <laughs> just special for you, Barbara. Know. <laughs> so we know it's good, it looks good, it tastes good, it feels good, it's creamy, it's yeah. smooth, it's tasty, <laughs> but how tasty is the business? Okay. So we stopped it there. Good. Um, <laughs> before I embarrass myself in front of the Utah State body, um, what's kind of crazy is the Queen of England died the same day, and our We're pitch- on the plane flying to go to LA. Yeah. We get this news report, Queen of England, dead. We're like, oh. Our whole pitch was like, about the Queen of England. Our whole pitch was around this thing. So yeah. that's So I'm, I'm texting the producers like, are we gonna have to change our pitch now? And they're like, well- um, We'll keep you posted. We'll keep you posted. <laughs> I'm like, I can barely remember my name, dude. I don't know if we can read in my whole pitch. Anyway, so- A lot of it, the producers made us be really extra for like the TV, so it's it's funny it's like cringe watching, watching back. We're like, oh, that's kind of cringe, but yeah. we had to be for the TV. It yeah, it, it, it worked. Yeah, and so here at this point in Shark Tank, it was literally people were like, "How was that experience?" How was, I was like, "It was literally an out of body experience because one, it went by so fast. One, it lasted ten years. It felt like, but also went by so fast." And it was so exhausting, and it was the hardest thing I've ever, literally, ever done. It's all real. Point. They don't cut anything. Well, they cut the episode, but when you're in the tank, they don't stop you and say, wait, say this. Wait, we're going to have Barbara. Barbara, say this. Okay, now we're going to go over here. Now you guys say this. No, we're standing on the carpet, and it's all real. We're there for about an hour. We were standing there, and they're talking over each other. They're asking questions, and we're directing the room kind of kind of where we want the, the conversation to go, and it's it's legit. But yeah. the, probably the scariest part, one, one question we get often was, was it scary going on Shark Tank? Yes, it was absolutely terrifying. Like, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> you do it. <laughs> but the scariest, <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. scariest part is, so Jeremy talked about those doors, and so you walk out, you go in, out of the doors, and you just stand on that carpet, that rug, for a full minute, you're standing there, you're staring at the sharks, they're staring at you, silence, for a full minute. It's terrifying. They're getting the cameras ready and everything, and then finally the producers say, okay, go. But you're standing like eye to eye with Kevin yeah. O'Leary, and I'm like, it's, yeah. it's terrifying. Yeah, you're like, it's don't scary. look at me, bro. Okay, um, so um, I had been watching this all my life, and I looked up to Barbara Corcoran and Mark Cuban, those two individuals, a ton. I love Mark Cuban. I love everything for what he stands for, what he's done in business. And um, it came down to, we'll see the ending because we cut it. <coughs> Excuse me. But um, we wanted Barbara Corcoran specifically. She had franchising experience. She knew the food industry. She had invested in specialty foods that have blown up. Um, some companies have done now over half a billion dollars in sales. And so we're like, we really want Barbara Mark. And what you don't see in the episode is Mark was actually super, super interested, and we thought he was going to give us an offer, but he backed out. Um, but Barbara Corcoran gives us this offer, and my heart drops because this is someone I had been watching on TV for so long. So let's hit the next slide. It's just going to be black. And then hit it one more time. It'll go to the video. You know, it should be painful. It should be. 
Both sides feel they're not getting a great deal. She wants more. She said 50%, and you're howling at the moon at 20. This should be a great partnership. As Kevin often says, all roads lead back to Barbara. That never happens. <laughs> it's, a, it's a dead end. Oh, my God. Barbara, would you do $200,000 for 17%? No. What's the difference of 3%? I've just worked so hard for this and... Listen, I bought 30% of Cousins Main Lobster business. It was my idea to franchise it. I was the one who told them they could make much more of a profit on a truck than they could on a restaurant. Experience is the one thing you guys don't have. That's yeah. correct. 3% is nothing if you're going to be successful. In fact, if I sit here another minute, I'm going to have to... Barbara, we'll take your offer. Okay. <laughs> Good job. Okay, so we did it. We partnered with Barbara Corcoran. And uh, it uh, was a phenomenal experience. Go to the next slide. I can't quite remember what it is. Okay, so this is our official portrait from uh, Shark Tank, us shaking Barbara Corcoran's hand. And uh, I couldn't believe it. So what happens after Shark Tank, people always ask, the deal like happens, like, uh, is she a good partner? All these extra questions. Yes, she's a good partner. 90% of the deals, though, that you see happen on Shark Tank actually do not go through. Um, during due diligence phase. And so they look into your company, they run an entire audit on your company, they see how successful you are, how much money you've made, how much debt you have, what you lied about, what you didn't lie about. And we've always been honest people. And so they actually found no dirt on us at all. And uh, she messages us and uh, she says in January of last year, she sends us a personal message, me and Kate, let's close this deal and let's party in New York City. And we're like, oh my God. Like, are you freaking kidding me? This was at like, what, six months after this? So it doesn't just like, oh, here's my cash. No, like there's so much due diligence that happens. Let's go to the next slide. And the next one. Okay. So this is us literally partying in New York City with Barbara Corker. She's 74 years old. Kate is like super pregnant there. Um, okay, go to the next video. Barbara, what's your favorite ice cream store? Let's freaking go. Okay, so uh, <laughs> we, I, uh, we're, we'll, we could probably get in trouble for showing that her dancing video, but uh, anyway, she, uh, we spent eight days with her in New York City, and we loved every moment of it. We're like, we partnered with the right person, and. Uh, that video of uh, this video, um, gosh, I look terrible in that video. Um, this video, though, of me being like, Barbara, what's your, so we sat around a table, and I was like, I cannot believe I'm sitting next to someone worth $655 million, like, like that just, like, boggled my mind, and so I'd, like, look at her like she was a pastel, and I, like, I couldn't even, like, believe that she was real, um, but, and that she was our official partner, and so I had to do a video and be like, she's got to endorse Crispy Cones. And so I, I told her, I said, Barbara, I want to do this video, and I want you to say that you love crispy cones. Okay, you got it? So I'm going to turn the video to you, the video camera to you. Tell me you love crispy cones. And so I do. I'm like, Barbara, what's your favorite ice cream shop? Cold Stone. I was like, screw you. <laughs> and she knew what she was doing. Um, and then we had to redo it. And she said crispy cones. But she is hilarious. She's incredibly fun. And I couldn't believe it, but at this moment, we had manifested our future from being a small town tent, a nobody, to literally partnering with the most influential female entrepreneurs um, of our era. It really was a pinch me moment being in New York City after going on Shark Tank with Barbara Corcoran, and we couldn't help but reflect on our entire journey leading up to that moment. It just felt so monumental that we literally started this company in a tent. Jeremy had nothing and he started it in a tent and here we are sitting right next to Barbara Corcoran and we had just closed this deal with her. And it, it, was, it was a feeling that we'll never forget of just felt so surreal and we couldn't, we couldn't believe that it was, it was real life. Yeah, I think there's another video on here, right? Yeah. Okay. Birthday to you. 
This is in her Happy super bougie house. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jenny. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. He's 15. He's 15. <laughs> Screw you, Mike. Okay. Um, that's like her right-hand guy right there, Mike Stevens. Uh, and uh, we showed up to her little penthouse. I was talking to the students before this and dinner. Um, but have you guys seen those that TikTok guy that like walks around New York City and is like, "Hey, you live in New York City, can how much do you pay for rent?" And they're like, "Oh, I pay like six thousand dollars." And they're like, "Can you give us a tour of your rent?" And it's like a toilet and a floor. Um, anyway, that guy's gone viral. Well, he did a video with Barbara Corcoran. Have you guys seen that video? That went like super mega viral. And then she uh, showed around her little penthouse in New York City, where you see uh, Central Park. It's beautiful. And we saw that video before we pitched on Shark Tank, and Kate and I looked at each other and we said, we're gonna partner with her and we're gonna eat dinner in her house. Like, I kid you not, I'm not lying to you. And we manifested that, and here is literally a video, it kind of makes my skin crawl a little bit, of us eating dinner in her house, everyone in her house singing happy birthday to me. It was like this out of body, I cannot believe I actually manifested my future. So let's go ahead and go to the next uh, picture here. What happens after Shark Tank, okay? So now, <laughs> after Shark Tank, this is our headquarter building just outside of Rexburg, um, and this is where all the magic happens. This is where our corporate team works every single day, and um, where we're testing product, where we're planning, where we're doing all of our marketing. Everything happens in our headquarter building, and this was another thing that we manifested. This is a, our theme throughout our whole presentation today is manifesting. Our first year of marriage, we sat down and we made a vision board of different things that we wanted to accomplish in life. And one of those things that we put on there in 2021, just after 2020, was that we wanted to have this headquarter building. We were in that video you showed of, or yeah, in that video of the our journey leading up to Shark Tank, you saw um, an apartment full of boxes. That was where we worked. It was our tiny little apartment and we had boxes to the walls. We had a tiny little path to our bed. And um, in that same apartment, we made this vision board with this headquarter building, not this specific one, but a stock image of a headquarter building of what we wanted to accomplish sometime. And so now we are here in this headquarter building and it's one of those things that we manifested and we worked so hard and it actually happened. And yeah. it's, it's pretty crazy. Okay, I know we're running out of time, so we'll hit the next slide here. This is where Krispy Cones is going. So we have sold 28 franchises nationally. Um, just today, we uh, closed a deal in Tennessee of a five-store location, five-store area. Um, we're going to Texas, Florida, and um, this week we close our first California location. So let's hit the next slide. That is uh, 27 locations and counting. Here's a picture of our very first franchisees in Provo, Utah. Um, when they opened, they broke they broke record numbers, it was absolutely insane. Um, and they continue doing well. Let's go to the next slide. Um, this is what we'd like to end our presentation on. Manifesting your dreams into reality. Who is the greatest entrepreneur that did exactly that? It's not me, it's not Kate, it's probably not anyone who's been on this stage, it's Walt Disney. Disney, Walt Disney saw exactly what he wanted. He saw the theme parks. He saw Mickey, he saw the ears. He knew this was gonna be a household name and he got laughed at. In fact, did you guys know Walt Disney went bankrupt at 21? He did, he couldn't even make payroll. So he filed for bankruptcy. It, but do we talk about that, about Walt Disney? Or do we talk about how great Disney is and what he's been able to build? So it's not about your failures, it's not about your early days, it's not about what you did wrong, it's about dreaming, believing, manifesting, and this is the best quote. If you, can't, if you can dream it, you can do it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Should we do some questions? Okay. All right, I think they want to open it up to some questions. Um, anyone have any questions out in the audience? Yes. So that is something when we first started franchising that we were like, 
how is somebody in Tennessee going to know about Crispy Owens where they've never had it or anything? So what's nice about social media is ads, targeting ads. And so that's what we do heavily is just um, social media ads on Facebook and TikTok where we can target specific demographics. We really narrow down our target audience and then we're able to target um, those specific areas. And that's what we've been doing and that's what we're finding success in with our new franchise stores. Good question. Any other questions? Yeah, over here. I just didn't do it. <laughs> no. Um, the, there's, there's so many things to starting a business. The last thing you want to do is all the paperwork. So just, I am the entrepreneur where I just, so, I, like the canopy tent, I'm pretty sure like public health, they actually approved that because you have to have that approval. But they were like, dude, where are you going to wash your dishes? I was like, I'll figure it out, I promise. Just give me the stamp of approval. And I did figure it out. Don't ask me where I wash the dishes um, at the time. But um, if you're so focused on the paperwork, the IPs, the I got to get this paper done, this paper done, this paper done, you're going to get burnt out and you're never going to open up your doors. But if you're focused on selling a product, the rest will figure out itself. The government can contact you and say, hey, you did this wrong, do this. What's the worst that can happen? You know what I mean? You're going to miss it anyway. Even if you focus on all the legalities, all the paperwork, you're gonna miss something and someone's gonna contact you and say, hey, you need to do this and you just do it. But becoming a franchise business was something that we did want to. Oh, that, like, yeah, make that sure was we did a lot that, of right? paperwork. <laughs> we yeah. didn't just wing that. No, we're not so, just some sketchy franchise, I promise. <laughs> yeah, that, that we was, had some really amazing attorneys that helped yes. us and figured out um, exactly what we need to do with the franchising route and got us the right paperwork, got us all the, all the legality things in line for that. Yeah, so, that was, a, franchising yeah. is a, yeah, you can go to jail for like 20 years if you do it bad. <laughs> um, and that actually almost bankrupted us, is paying for legal fees. It was about $49,000. We didn't have $49,000, but we signed a paper saying we'll pay $49,000. Like, what the hell are you going to do when you can't pay $49,000? Well, we figured it out, and they created all the legal documents for us, and we found the money. It almost bankrupted us, but we got to where we are now, and we survived. Any other questions? Right there, I see you. Say that one more time. Yes. Do you want me to explain it? Okay. So this this was like it's a brioche, but this would they would have this product for kings and queens in Hungary and the Czechoslovakia. So this was like a bougie item you get when you go visit the king, and so cultural significance. They understand that, but it's kind of changed into like this tourist trap in Prague, where when you go and you see these like beautiful castles in Prague, you get this famous treat that was served in those castles in the 17th century. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. So I know you were, you said that you started up. Uh, why did you want to do something like Um, it depends on how much money you have. So if you have no money in the bank, you're literally doing everything. You are the business. You die, your business dies. You get run over by a bus, your, bu your business gets run over by a bus. And so you can only delegate so much. And right now, like we have franchisees from Orlando living in, or not living, they're visiting our headquarters right now and they're being trained. Um, and I have a VP of training and but if I didn't have money for that, I would literally not be here right now. I'd be training them there. So y when you start a business, it is you. And until you have enough money, until you sold the product enough, you can't delegate. But you need to start firing yourself when you do have that money. Yeah. Oh, uh, everything. Um, <laughs> everything and nothing. So I think our journey is very, very unique. Um, I don't know the answer to that question. That's a really good question. Um, I don't know if there's anything specifically we'd change or do differently. I think we did everything wrong and everything right all at the same time. We've lost tens of thousands of dollars doing something wrong. 
uh, we hired <coughs> uh, a, an employee cost us like $1.3 million. So like, what do you do then, right? That was a huge mistake of ours. Um, but we can't cry about $1.3 million. We have to keep going. But um, there's a lot of things. It's just, you just got to keep going. You got to get up. You got to keep going. You got to do what you're doing every single day. Showing up is 80%, 20% decisions. Um, just show up. Just keep going. <coughs> Say that again. Utah State? Or just, or just having a location a in location Utah. Utah. Uh, is a great market. We wanted to be here. We were living here. here at the time, too. Yeah. So our first year of marriage, we were living in Logan. Um, and so we didn't ha we weren't, like, next to our Rexburg store. And we saw the market in Cache Valley, and we thought that it would be really awesome. And so we were just kind of playing around with the idea of opening a storefront here. And um, we're looking on listing sites, and we found an opportunity that um, was perfect for what we were looking for and was the perfect avenue of opening our first storefront. And we'll honestly ev like forever be grateful for that opportunity that gave us our first little break into the storefront options because if it wasn't for that, I feel like we probably would still be in the trailer trying to figure out what to do with the business and how to scale it and stuff. But honestly, we just kind of saw um, an opportunity and we took it. And throughout our journey, on a lot of it as well, we didn't take a lot of time to make decisions. We saw an opportunity and we took it. And um, with Shark Tank, with just different storefronts, with franchising, different everything, we kind of um, came up with this idea and then we said, okay, let's do it, let's just go. We pivot really fast in how we make decisions and even just in day-to-day -day -day, um, operations and business and stuff too, we, we pivot really quick with how we make decisions because we feel like the opportunity is there and we don't want to miss the, that window of opportunity. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys. This is so fun. <laughs>